And then, um, oh, that's kind of yeah. My and that, that label was called Artisan. Then they got bought out by a record company uh, by the name of Mac Avenue Records out of Detroit, and um, that's where my second CD, Little Man Soul, uh, was released in 2009. Two number one hits from that uh, album. Um, wow. Yeah. Um, the first song, the first uh, single, "I'm Waiting for You," um, spent okay. 12 weeks at number one on a Billboard, and then the second single, "Take Me There," this year was uh, six weeks. Um, uh, on the billboard new cd just came out august 6th um and um the single is doing very well it's called dance with me okay um, and the, the title of the cd is jackie joiner just just my name and that's number three right now so that's the um, self-title but wow. the other titles are also significant because those they are, are your nicknames they, 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 well, yeah. well you know <laughs> tell us about that tell us about that i, I gave myself the first cd is entitled baby soul and i gave myself that nickname because um i i seem to find myself being at least 20 years younger than, than the band that I'm playing with. So um, they would always refer to me as a baby or something. Something referring to someone who's just really too young to be doing this. Um, so I just decided to name, since it's my first CD out the box, Baby So that's song. what it came about? Baby, was that, a, that the nickname came around, about around that time, or was it something that was even older? Well, that, no, that was that was around that time. Little Man Soul was a nickname, which is my second CD. Okay. That, uh, Marcus, I was playing with Marcus Johnson and Bobby Lyle, and that was a nickname huh? oh, that yeah, they Bobby gave Lyle. me. So, okay. so they would uh, say, hey, welcome to the stage, Little Man Soul on saxophone. So, and, and, you know, for a good two years, that's what they would call me. And I said, okay. And then even the audience was like, oh, yeah, Little Man Soul, Little Man Soul's going to play. So I never thought I'd actually name it my CD. Um, so uh, you know that's that's how that happened when we when me and my wife moved out here. You know, got the two CDs going, named it Little Man Soul, and then now I decided you know let's go somewhere different. Uh, let's just name it Jackie Joiner. So and that's the latest CD. Did a lot of work in the studio with that. It was very difficult because I was touring a lot. Um, aside with touring by myself and doing lots of shows that I do throughout the nation. I also tour with Keiko Matsui. Okay, that- Keiko, and I, listen, I go back as far as Kazu. I know. Oh, wow. Well, I, go I, got, I, got the, I got the albums, you know, and I got Keiko's, um, oh, yeah. I got her, the albums and the, you know, the videos. Oh, yeah. yeah. DVD presentation from Keiko. Yeah, yeah I, I haven't uh, met, met uh, Kazu. Um, I, I came into the picture when... He wasn't in the picture. Okay. And, and she in the musical. Use a different... <laughs> right. Right. I know what you mean. I know what you Let mean. Let me make sure that's right. Right, 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 right. Because, right, right. you know, I don't want right, to say right, it. Right, right, right. I don't know. Right. I, don't, I don't even know. <laughs> no, I know. That's smart move. Smart move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, hey, you never know how people might take things, you know. <sighs> but so that's, so that's really nice to play with them because they're known for using some really good... Uh, yeah. Sax folks. Yeah, that's, you know, there's um, a whole group of known folks. That's good. Paul Taylor for a while. Yeah, he Paul played Taylor. with Keiko. He spent years playing with yeah. Keiko Masui, and I like Paul Taylor. I love his sound. I even listen to Paul Taylor too. Just finished recording with Keiko as well. Um, I haven't played on any of her records until this, until now, which uh, her new CD comes out. I think it's called The Road dot 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 something that she named it, and that comes out in January. So we're still touring, and I'm still doing my thing. You know, I got a show this week in, in Seal Beach. Uh, at Spagatini's, you know, something we do every year. Um, fun, you know. My, my, my. I don't know if you've seen it in my concerts, but we we have a lot of a. No, but I expect that I will be. <laughs> I expect Going that on, I will so. be. So yeah, man. So that's pretty much been it. You know, just flying coast to coast all year. <laughs> well, I want I want to talk a little bit about your your more your formative years, but before we do that, okay, let's take a look at your EPK. So okay. that our audience can get a chance to meet you a little more personally. Oh, you're going to do the urban buffer, man? You know, we have yeah, to buffer. You never bit. know how it's going to buffer. <laughs> it's going to buffer. We you know, never know. It's the it's commercial technology. before the commercial, you know. We just cheer it <laughs> on. commercial commercial. Go. Yeah, there you go. So it eases in. And then a post-commercial. There you go. <laughs> Baby Soul was uh, my first national CD here in the United States and worldwide. It was uh, the first CD that actually gave me recognition as a national instrumentalist. It's a CD that I produced by myself and it was uh, picked up by Rick Braun and Richard Elliott's label Artisan. I decided to name my second release in the United States, uh, Lone Man Soul. Um, I remember back when I was on the road playing with uh, some of the cats that have been in the business uh, a lot longer than myself, like Mike Marcus Johnson and Bobby Lau, and um, rather than referring to me as Jackie Joyner, they would actually call me Lone Man Soul, or Welcome to the Stage, Everybody, Lone Man Soul, and it was uh, kind of like my nickname. 
uh, began to push more towards my original sound and my original tone on the the alto saxophone, which is my main voice on the second CD. My latest CD is a self-titled CD, Jackie Joyner. Um, I decided to go with a self-titled CD because I wanted this CD to really focus on me and who I am and my name in the industry. It was really fun to play tenor saxophone um, on the new CD and also uh, I did a little bit more soprano work. The song Dance With Me comes from my experience in Guadalajara, Mexico, where um, we went to an original salsa club in Mexico, and um, I was forced to dance. <laughs> and uh, I just had so much fun watching how they danced there. It was just amazing. I just had so much fun when I was there that when I got back to the United States, I decided that I wanted to compose a song that reminded me of the time that I had in Guadalajara, Mexico. The story behind the opening track entitled The Reunion comes from the fact that I reunited with my father whom I hadn't seen in 24 years of the 30 years that I've been living and also my two older sisters uh, Keisha and Jacqueline. It was a very exciting moment, an emotional moment for me um, when my wife had given me the phone while I was sleeping on the couch and said I'd like for you to talk to someone. It was my father which I hadn't seen for 24 years of my life. I probably had the most fun working on this new CD, Jack King Joyner. I had so much fun. Yeah, all wow. right, man. all right, everybody. Yeah, man. Yeah, I all like right, that. man. I thought I was gonna get the clap button. I'm <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> totally yeah. glad. He's like, dude. There we go. I gotta love it. I really feel like a you know right. what? That's because we need an ergonomic redesign in the studio. <laughs> We really oh, have no. some converted IKEA. <laughs> no, no, man. See, <laughs> it's, see converted, he started. I, it's converted IKEA you, up in you here. You started this clap thing. You know what it is? And now you can't keep up. I can't see that far. <laughs> Maybe I can bring, bring one on stage and be like, <laughs> okay, y'all ain't got to clap. <laughs> there you go. I I press the button. <laughs> there you go. I'm, I'm getting it. better. He's <laughs> getting better. <laughs> you know, Jakeem, I, gotta, I really want to know about your early. When did you first. What is your earliest memories of getting into music and music appreciation before you. Got into saxophone, okay? I, I remember um, uh, my church in Virginia, bef before I moved up to uh, New York, I was about 11 years old, and uh, the name of the church was um, Livermore Tabernacle, and uh, Pastor Michael Patterson, who's a bishop now, um, was the pastor of the church, and I remember seeing the youth choir performed and I was, and I, I so much wanted to get into the youth choir and seeing the band and the choir and, and the drums and the keyboards. I was just really excited. And you played about nothing that. at that I time? I didn't play anything. I just wanted to join a choir, but they told me I was too young. <laughs> 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 but I don't know how it happened, but uh, I managed to, to get in, in the choir. I was actually the youngest person in, in the youth choir as well. Wow. So I was singing, you know, um, after my mom moved us up to Syracuse, New York, um, I had picked up the drums and I was actually playing drums okay. in uh, a couple of different churches. Um, so church is a big part of your church, life. Church is absolutely. I mean, that's where that's where it all stemmed from. from okay. Me. You know, I mean, um, even with my writing comes from playing in church because I played keyboard. I was a music director of uh, my church, World Harvest Outreach. When I moved back to Virginia, I was a music director there for a while as well, playing keyboards mostly and, and uh, you know, directing the choir and the youth choir and, and, and devotional and making sure. All so that playing keyboards, you know, it's interesting. My writing partner is a, it plays piano and our stuff, but he also mm -hmm. plays trumpet. Is it a thing with you guys that you... <laughs> 
That some of you you play piano and I, well, what do you what do you? Maybe just one instrument is just not enough. I mean, I've even been thinking about picking up something else. You know, I'm like, man, maybe really? I should try cello or something. Because your dad played bass. That's the president, My, but we make him wait. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm, excuse me, uh, Joaquin Joyner is on live right now, so we cannot take Don't, the call. Tell him the call back. Yeah, too late. <laughs> <laughs> wow, man. But uh, yeah, my father he plays guitar and bass. Okay, um, and he, you know, he. I was actually talking to my father yesterday, and he was telling me about some of his road stories back in his seventies, and uh, you know they would make about fifty bucks a night or something like that, which which now is you know about five hundred bucks. <laughs> so you know he said that that was a little, that was a lot of change for him, and you know my mother. Um, even went with him on the road and different things like that. Oh. So he lived a life of, okay. a, of a touring musician. He never recorded anything, but uh, I think he was doing mostly gospel and a lot of, you know, like um, weddings and kind of, you know, how the professional musician thing. So how did show. you move? So your progression was, I guess you, did you, what, what lessons did you take? What lessons did you take at first? Because if you said you said you were well, playing drums. I was playing the playing drums. Well, here's a, here's a story. Uh, I, I'm a self-taught keyboard player. Um, okay. I'm playing a ma- uh, majority of all the keyboard parts on all of my records. Yeah. Um, uh, I, when I went to high school, when my first my freshman year in high school, I wanted to actually play the drums. But uh, the music teacher said. Now, why was that? I don't know because I guess I was playing the drum. <laughs> <laughs> I like the drums, you know. One thing about us African Americans they say the is the saxophone is supposed to be the sexiest. I right know, now. man. I didn't learn that till later, <laughs> until I got married. <laughs> We had I, had I known that back then, I wouldn't have been trying to drums. Oh man! <laughs> yeah, you know it was. You know, the crazy thing is, is it was it was the music teacher said, uh, you know, we have enough drummers in the school, so why don't you try a different instrument or try something else so that we can kind of fill the band. Up. Wow! So I said okay, and he had a couple of instruments. So he had trumpets, trombones, and all kinds of things. And I looked at the saxophone. I was like, oh man, that's pretty. That's got a lot of buttons. I see, look, look, look how all these decisions are made. <laughs> look how everybody see how these decisions. <laughs> these life decisions. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and it had a lot of buttons on it. And I, you know, I, I liked the challenge, so I said, "Okay, I'll do saxophone," <laughs> and that was wow. it. And then I just fell in love with the saxophone after about a couple of weeks. And I was like, "Man, this thing is cool." And then my little brother picked up trombone, and my other little brother uh, picked up bass and keyboards, and. We actually formed a band. I'm about to say Jackson Five. Jackson well, Jackson it wasn't the Jackson Five. <laughs> we formed a band that my mother named Increase in Syracuse, New York, and uh, it's not spelled like you would spell Increase. It's actually spelled I N K R E E S E, and um, and we did a lot of talent shows, a lot of newspaper recognitions, and what and kind of music? We were doing like the contemporary jazz stuff. Because you were being influenced by who? Your mom at that time? I mean, because at that age, I mean, well, what you're listening to around the house is somewhat controlled. Well, my mom is listening to, uh, <laughs> you know, Fred Hammond and Yolanda Adams. And, okay, okay. And the old school uh, okay. uh, gospel thing. Okay. Um, I was, you know, I, we were listening to people like uh, Rick Braun, okay. James, Gerald Albright, okay. Kirk Whalem, and those okay, kind of well, things. And we were all Kirk excited Whalum. about that music. Yeah. So we played um, jazz. Like, that you were, kind you of were music. excited about jazz. Yeah, exactly. Folks. Exactly. Exactly, man. We just wanted to kind of put a little uh, more of a hip thing to it. Right. So, um, okay. which which is re- really reflective on my last CD. Okay. Uh, a lot of hip tracks, and even on a second CD, there's a couple of tracks in there that's got the kind of R and B style, which which I think is really my style on the saxophone is like saxophone R and B. You know. Okay. Trying to be sexy. Well, yeah, sometimes. Well, yeah. Yeah, they say soul nice and R and B saxophones. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that's how it all started. I mean, I, you know, the first time I ever recorded because now that I've recorded and, and three CDs, including producing and writing. I remember the first time I recorded something, and it was in Radio Shack. And I went into Radio Shack, and there was this keyboard. And it had eight tracks, and you can press record right, on it. Right. And then record, and then I, you can press record again. And I was like, oh, I could put another track on it. And I, you know, I did it like eight right. times, and I stayed in there for like hours. I know they wanted to kick me out. But I was like, man, I didn't know you could track. <laughs> <laughs> like the early days of Diddy. <laughs> oh, that's right. Man, that's right. So I'm like, man, this is cool. So, I mean, from from there, I fell in love with the whole writing and producing. You know, so I think well, how did you approach the producing thing now? Because a, you know, a lot of us start different ways. Many of us. 